Yeah, we have been through it before. We've seen uh, movies like this even in Ireland, in Cyprus, and obviously the, the most memorable being Greece, which was the most extended. But I think the, the playbook is really one where uh, when the, uh, the European elites, whatever you want to call them, don't really like an election uh, and it goes against them, they, they sort of yeah. use the ECB and they use the markets to kind of fight back. And we're going to see a little BTP crisis. We're going to see Italian banks come under pressure. The ECB may come into play and start threatening uh, certain actions like collateral uh, acceptance and the like, things that we wrote about and in Dave, the commentary today. Yeah, so it gets you think interesting. this goes back? We, last week we saw, for example, a ratings agency come out and warn about Italy, and that seemed to then give the justification for the president to say, well, if the rating agency is warning about this fragile go, and I don't like the sound of this. In other words, Will Fast last hour is, you know, are we going to see Mario Draghi come out and say, I'll do whatever it takes, you know, Mario Draghi of the ECB. What you're saying is it sounds like the ECB is going to say, no, 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 we want this done our way. It's our way or the highway. Well, well, that's not what the ECB did with Greece, and it's not what they did with Ireland, and it's not what they did with Cyprus. They basically said, we're going to turn you off. You're not going to get any more euros unless you join a program. Guess what the program is? Raising taxes and cutting spending, the exact opposite of the program that these two guys that got together in the coalition would like to do. So this is the new Europe. The new Europe is one where the ECB is the muscle man. The ECB can come in and basically sort of make... Uh, I think some, some pretty painful outcomes for voters if they decide to go too far away from the center. And I'm more yeah. mm. convinced that that's what's happening in Italy. And by the way, that's much more dangerous in Italy than it is in a place like Greece or Cyprus or Ireland. Italy's much bigger. It's much more integrated in the financial system. So I think the market is correct to get a little nervous here, particularly in the Italian markets, because that's where the pressure will be put. Yeah. And then the threat of contagion, I think, is... I, like many of your guests, I'm not, I'm not as worried about it because I do think the ECB will try to contain it, but I think they want to still, still cause a little pain. Yeah, they, they want to stoke it and contain it once the outcome goes their way. I want to hear everybody's thoughts on this, Mike. No, I, I'm right in line with that. I mean, I do think everyone keeps talking about the Greek crisis and Cyprus and all the rest of it. Uh, we did have more pain in our markets before, ultimately, we basically were able to write it off and say, no big deal. Um, so it, it wasn't just a down one and a half market. percent move. Right, exactly. Uh, that being said, if I were to draw back and not look at any news at all, I'd say, well, it looks like the market has to prove again that the bottom end of this range is going to hold. Really didn't change anything. We're back a few weeks in terms of S&P levels. Bank stocks got, gave up a few weeks worth of gains. So even Treasury yields back to seven weeks ago. So you think we're just correcting sort of a we overran generally I whatever the catalyst was. I think categories we overran, including oil, including people being short treasuries. Um, I'm not sure about the S&P, but I think in general, we have to, I guess, refrain from saying this is some kind of a game changing moment. Uh, the S&P is basically flat year to date. What do you think, Jason? Well, listen, I think, as Mr. Zervo said, I think the stakes are going up uh, in Europe. There's no two ways about it because you had uh, a democratic election that that suggested that the that populism is an enduring, uh, well, they it's an enduring political theme and it's an enduring investment theme. Yeah. And I think the ECB is going to have to blink. Uh, and ECB, what do you mean by that? I think they're, you know, the balance sheet right now in, in uh, the ECB's balance sheet, I think, is about four and a half uh, trillion euros, if I'm not mistaken, up Massive. from about a trillion. And uh, they want to taper, but I'm not, I'm not so sure they're going to be able to because uh, you think when they'll push keep comes buying to show, Italian bonds? I think they're, I don't, I don't see what the down? choice, I don't see what the choice is if you have the five star movement and you have the leg of Nord there that are hell bent on perhaps having a referendum on on the euro which it would be i think very dangerous given the political what you've seen politically in the world over the last couple of years Kerry? well i i think you're looking as mike said as a, a market that is flat for the year it's 16 and a half times next year's earnings think about earnings growth they're up 25 percent in the first quarter for the s p 500 we're expecting 18 plus percent this year that's a big number that can continue into next year. And I don't think what's going on right now really changes that scenario. I mean, there right. are issues, of course, with the dollar, but there are some positive, strong positives to even to the extent that interest rates are low enough not to force the substitute question about whether you buy bonds or stock. Stocks are attractive on that level until you really get into the three plus area and stay there. And so, Dave, let's go back to the three options here that you think, uh, you know, three possible outcomes. One, uh, which Jason raised, is that 
the European Central Bank just buys the Italian debt. And like you said, the Germans basically blink because they don't want Italy to leave the Eurozone. That, that's one option. The other option is that, you know, they, they just kind of crush the political movement and move on. And the third option you're saying is Italy, you know, leaving or being forced out of the euro. So what do you think is most likely at this point? I think that the uh, Germans and the elites will end up trying to crush or curtail the Italian movement. That's the most likely outcome. There might be a little more pain, as all your guests uh, seem to highlight. Uh, but uh, as your guests also highlight, there's some great fundamental story in the United States. The equity market, to me, still looks very positive. Deregulation, lower taxes, great earnings. And if you throw in a Fed that's closer to stopping, which I think they are on a number of reasons, not just because of Italy, but hmm. because of disinflation So you also risks. think they might not keep raising rates? I mean, I think they go in June, but I think the signal is that the market was crazy to think that there was going to be four this year and four next year. It was just out of its mind. And, 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 and this Italy thing just plays into that a little better. But that's great news for stocks because the main reason stocks sold off this year, or didn't rally, I should say, on the great earnings story, was that they had to be dis those earnings had to be discounted at potentially much higher rates. I think what, what about, we're seeing oh, is those rates aren't going to materialize. Is, if that, you know, I guess well, anybody who bought the banks for higher rates then goes, never mind. But if you bought them for other reasons, you know, deregulation, yeah, you know, M&A, yeah. just better economy. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 not as, I'm not as excited about the financials as everybody else. I don't think they're bad. And in fact, a European banking crisis, which is what the, the sort of elites would push through, could send a lot of customers back over to U.S. banks because they're just worried hmm. about what might happen in Europe with financial institutions. So it could be a boom for some of the big money center banks. So there are other things besides interest rates that are going to keep those earnings in a good place. And as you said, things like deregulation and lower taxes are definitely there. So right. I don't want to special, I don't want to single out financials as the, the main driver here. I think there's a good stock trade, a lower interest rate trade, but I do think there's some volatility and some serious volatility coming as the European project try the, the leaders of the European project try it's to again. influence yep. the election. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.